Hi, I'm Cleo Doyle. I'm a sixth year PhD candidate in English and Renaissance Studies, and I'm a 2020 winner of the Field Prize. My prize submission is called um, Slimy Kemp's Ill Smelling of the Mud, the Terroir of Poetry, and the Desire for Change in Barclay's Eclogues. It's about the 16th century poet um, Alexander Barclay and uh, the way in which his work reflects this vision of poetry as being created out of the food that the poet eats. Uh, in this case, uh, Barclay's speakers are eating substandard food and therefore their poetry is marred by this. Um, instead of seeing this as necessarily a bad thing, I suggest in my essay that um, poetry is necessarily shaped by the material constraints of its creation, uh, but it can also, in the very moment in which it is distorted by an imperfect world, attest to the need for a better one. Um, I was thinking when I wrote it a year ago about the academic job market, but I think it also applies to this even more imperfect world that we're living in right now. Um, anyway, thank you, Yale. Hello, my name is Daniel Eastman. I am graduating with a PhD in the Department of Religious Studies. My work is on the social history of early Christian communities, primarily in the Eastern Mediterranean area. And I am a 2020 winner of the Field Prize. My prize submission is titled, How to Read the Gospel, Reading and Ritual in Late Ancient Syria. If you asked most historians of early Christianity who the most important actors were in ancient Christian society, you might get a range of answers. Bishops or priests, or perhaps apostles, prophets, or other charismatic figures. One answer that you probably would not get is books. Books, so the assumption goes, are not people. They don't go around doing things, acting on or against others, and impacting the webs of relationships that constitute society. My article challenges this assumption by focusing on a particular kind of book, specifically gospel books written in Syriac between the 5th and 7th centuries. I argue that these books were actually major social actors in early Christian communities in Syria and Mesopotamia. To make this argument, I draw on a range of sources not often examined together, including Syriac gospel book manuscripts, liturgical commentaries and hagiographical literature, and archeological evidence concerning the structure of church buildings in the ancient Near East. What I find in the article is that gospel books played a number of important roles in Syriac Christian communities including judging between competing parties, ordaining new clergy, and even healing, or sometimes killing, people whom they touched. In all of these roles, Syriac Christians understood gospel books to be acting as the physical presence of Christ, whose life is recounted in the four canonical gospel texts contained within the gospel book. By tracing the connections between the reading of the gospel text and the appearance and movement of the gospel book within the temporal and spatial context of the weekly liturgy, I argue that the status of the gospel book as the person of Christ was not simply a given. It was rather a social fact based on the web of relationships construct constructed around the gospel book, both inside and outside the church building. For example, gospel books occupied a special throne-like structure in the middle of many Syrian churches, and they processed back and forth within the church space in a way meant to mirror the historical movement of Christ to and from Jerusalem. And outside the church building, gospel books often presided over councils, again seated on a throne in the middle of the proceedings. In both settings, the placement of the gospel book vis-a-vis -vis other structures and people encouraged its viewers to see it as the physical manifestation of Christ's presence 
and to relate to it accordingly. Although my article focuses on gospel books, these weren't the only books or the only objects that did things in early Christian society. Scholars today are just starting to explore the extent to which the fabric of late ancient society in general went beyond our modern categories of human and non-human, subject and object. My hope is that the questions I raise in this article will stimulate further exploration into the agency of objects writ large, as well as shedding light on the particular agency of gospel books. My thanks to the members of the Porterfield Com Committee for reading the article and to you for listening. Hello, my name is Kevin Feeney. Um, I am graduating with a PhD in Ancient History from the History Department here at Yale. And I am a 2020 winner of the Porter Prize. My prize-winning submission is called Roman Imperial Accession from Maximinus Thrax to Justinian, 235 to 527 CE. My work examines the age-old question of where political legitimacy comes from, and it takes an interdisciplinary perspective to apply this question to the late Roman Empire. I find that uh, rather than operating on the basis of an accepted universal theory of succession, um, instead new Roman emperors arose to meet the challenges of particular moments, whether that was out in the field or at home in the capital. With no accepted means of arbitrating between the competing claims of different emperors, the only way to really establish oneself um, as a secure emperor was victory in warfare over rivals. Thank you very much and best wishes to all my fellow uh, 2020 graduates who are finishing up under such uh, difficult circumstances out in the world. Hi everyone, I'm Aitan Tartaje. I graduated in December 2019 with a PhD from the Comparative Literature Department. I'm a literary critic and a scholar of modernism and a 2020 winner of the John Addison Porter Prize. My prize submission, which was also my dissertation, is called Adagios of Form. In my work, I study how slowness is both a surprisingly persistent theme and a striking source of aesthetic innovation in art, literature, music, and film from the 20th and 21st century. It turns out that slowness is intimately tied to questions of community and class. We often disapprovingly think we're slow as a result of living together with others in comparative context. Yet writers as diverse as F. Scott Fitzgerald, the French novelist Marcel Proust, and the Italian modernist Italis Vevo teach us that taking one's time can instead signal expertise, political resistance, class consciousness, and even creativity. Those same aesthetic and thematic concerns remain highly relevant today to cultural developments in experimental music, art, food, and cinema. To the graduating class of 2020, congratulations on all your accomplishments. I'm honored to share in these celebrations and cannot wait to see what the future holds for each of you.